film's The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb delivers all the familiar expectations of the mummy subgenre. Archaeologists cursed for desecrating an ancient tomb, a manuscript that promises eternal life, quote-unquote natives who accept the superstitious legends that the smug Western scientists reject, and so on. In other words, just another Orientalist fantasy that mixes eroticism and bogus mystery. Thanks to their ancient and exotic settings, however, mummy films also boast a much higher than average attention to mise en scene, creating physical environments that can appeal on their own. In Curse, the hammer technicians excel themselves with a low-budget vision of ancient Egypt and fantasiac London, created out of no doubt dime store bric-a-brac. In this variation on the legend, Alexander King, Fred Clark, an obnoxious if inventive American showman wants to sell the mummy legend to a gullible audience, and a good portion of the film focuses on him putting together a big show, like a Broadway producer in a 30s musical. As a result, the creation of an exotic razzle-dazzle ambience is to some extent what the film is about. When King is killed, however, and everyone forgets about him, the showy spectacle has to shift gears to a more horrific atmosphere. King is not exactly the protagonist, but he does initiate much of the action, and it is certainly unusual to have a major character drop out of his story with apparently no one noticing. A lot of messy exposition shifts attention elsewhere, but the silence about King's death makes it seem as if the other characters are just glad to be rid of his brassy showmanship. Seemingly patched together, no one seems to have recognized any of the story's loose ends and inconsistencies. Who are the bloody marauders in the opening sequence, for example? What is going on when the artifacts are rifled by someone before the archaeologists leave Egypt, but nothing is stolen? There's a good deal of emphasis on a written inventory of the tomb which is stolen, as if the list were important in itself, but then it too disappears from the story. As for the predictable love triangle between Annette Dubois, Jean Rowland, John Bray, Ronald Howard, and Adam Beauchamp, Terence Morgan, he contributes more perplexity than emotional glue. Adam is such a bundle of contradictions that he impresses most as a conventional requirement and in any event is introduced so late that he seems almost an afterthought. Amidst such narrative disarray, the physical environment has to hold things together. As long as the images sparkle, little of this confusion matters, and even after King's death, the decor, color, texture, and lighting remain engaging. The action may be bumpy, but when the time comes to dispatch the mummy, you don't especially care that the rubble which buries him appears inexplicably and conveniently out of nowhere. A final flourish, the cascade of stone and dirt looks and feels right, and in this context, that is all that really matters.